Hi, welcome, welcome. This one's about freedom articles and the own anniversaries. Event is the year of 2017. If you go back in time exactly 50 or 100 years ago, there are key events that occurred that still shape our world today. Events orchestrated by the same network of secret societies that have been manipulating the world for hundreds, if not thousands of years. The following article highlights five of its anniversaries about which is important to inform yourself since the official version of these events is shadow at best and deceptive at worst. In all cases, the events were not what they seemed at the time, nor were they ever told full truth afterwards by governments or the mainstream media. 100 years since the US was tricked into entering World War One, The US government in 1917 under Woodrow Wilson tried to paint a picture that it was highly reluctant to enter the war in Europe that became known as World War One, the so-called war to end all wars. At one point, perhaps that was true. However, since the agents of deception had infiltrated the White House, such as Colonel Edward Mandel's house, handle of the then U.S. President Wilson, the U.S. was being manipulated to enter the war on the side of the triple entry, Britain, France, Russia. The social engineers knew, though, that they couldn't simply announce that they would U.S. would enter the war. It would be a political suicide, go against Wilson's campaign promises and cross public opinion. Besides, that's not how things work. The manipulators use technique of order out of chaos to move their agenda forward by stealth, just as the false flag Pearl Harbor incident that would get the US into the war in 1941. They need an excuse by which they could claim they were defending themselves. The British ship RMS Luciana provided such an excuse because it was carrying American passengers. The cruiser, which left New York and was bound for Britain, was hiding British armaments and was attacked by a German U-boat and sunk on May 7, 1915. For the well-researched background of false flag Luciana event, see the article FF at Sea. Luciana Woodrow Wilson, the deceptions that dragged America into a world war. And this is a, a article they put, Germans put in the newspaper. It's noticed that Travellers intending to embark on the Atlantic voyage are reminded that the state of war exists between Germany and her allies and Great Britain and her allies, that the zone of war includes the waters adjacent to the British Isles, that in accordance with formal notice given by the Imperial German government, vessels flying the flag of Great Britain or any other of her allies were liable to destruction in those waters, and that the travellers sailing in the war zone on ships of Great Britain or her allies do so at their own risk. Imperial Germany Embassy, Washington, D.C., April 22nd, 1915. Germany knew they were being coaxed into war. They even took out an ad that was published in 50 U.S. newspapers warning Americans who were going to be aboard Luzena that they were entering a war zone and thus could be attacked. On May 5th, two days before the tragedy, Wilson... Winston Churchill met Admiral Fisher, First Sea Lord Admiral Oliver, Chief Naval Staff, and Commander Joseph Kenworthy, Naval Intelligence, in the Albemarle's map room. Here, a great grid shows the locations of British ships and hostile ships marked with pins. The map showed the Luciano and the U-20 on a collision course. What was said is unrecorded, but Kenworthy wrote in his post-war book that the freedom of the seas, the Luciana, was deliberately sent at a considerably reduced speed into an area where a U-boat was known to be waiting and with her escorts withdrawn. However, the publisher deleted the word deliberately at the Admiralty's instance. The Admiralty could have safeguarded the Lutsania by re- rerouting her around north of Ireland, where it knew no new U-boats were operating. On May 7, however, no destroyers were designated to protect her. Even though four were lying idle in the nearby port of Milford Haven, and despite the U-20's known presence in the South Irish Sea, where it had sank two seamers in the previous day, the only warship assigned to meet the Lutana was an aging cruiser, the Juno. Juno. However, even Juno was ordered back to the port of Queenstown on Ireland's south coast on the justification that she was vulnerable to a submarine attack. <clears throat> like most of these events, the perpetrators were in charge of the subsequent investigation commission and cover-up. Cover 
Thus, in violations with the traditions of justice, Lord Mersey was asked to render a verdict before the inquiry even began. The request came from the men responsible for denying the Lutzana protection. Comparison to Pearl Harbor is that in the event President F. Franklin Roosevelt and select officials had completed complete full knowledge of the attack, which they denied to the commanders in Hawaii. Admiral Kimmel and General Short Roosevelt then appointed to an investigative body, Roberts Commission, which laid all blame on Kimmel and Short Roosevelt, thus focused, followed the example set 26 years earlier by his distant cousin Churchill. It bears mentioning that when the Lutzana sank, Franklin D. Roosevelt was Assistant Secretary of the Naval, the same position held by uh, another of his cousins, Theodore Roosevelt. When the USS Maine exploded in 1898, triggering the Spanish-American War. There you go. I didn't know that. I didn't know his cousin, Theodore Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, was on that ship. I had no idea. Same position held by another of his cousins. Wow. The sinking of Lutzana, sorry for saying it wrong, in 1915 was not in... Uh, of itself enough for the warmongering international bankers to get U.S. into war. They got their pretext two years later in 1917 with the Zimmerman telegram. Our re-elected Wilson shared the peace pre pretenses and again sought justification for war after Germany, pressing for victory to an end of the gruesome conflict, announced resumption of unrestricted submarine warfare. Wilson terminated relations, claiming Germany had broken its pledge. He ignored that the pledge had been conditionated, Britain's reciprocal observance of the international law, something the British government never did, but Wilson still needed another provocation to push the war button. Arthur Zimmerson was Germany's foreign secretary. In January 1917, he had cabled the German ambassador in Mexico, instructing him that if the US entered the war, Germany should propose for military alliance with Mexico. Such proposals were actually pay par for the course and the international deal making of World War One. For example, Britain had brought Italy into the war as an ally by promising the Italians new territory. The Mex Mexicans were considered with the German proposal quite unrealistic. Nonetheless, when Wilson released the Zimmerman telegram to the wire services, it was used to renew the German invasion hysteria. On April 2nd, Wilson can convened Congress and requested the declaration of war which came four days later. Despite the orchestrated media failure, most Americans still opposed the war. But the financial powers had lines up both parties. Machines, only a handful of courageous senators and congressmen opposed the declaration. Um, Dear Lord Rothschild, I have much pleasure in conveying to you on behalf of His Majesty's Government the following declaration of sympathy with the Jewish Zionist aspirations which has been submitted to and approved by the Cabinet. His Majesty's Government files with favour in the establishment in Palestine the national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavours to facilitate the achievement of this object. It being being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which can prejudice, prejudice the civil religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine or the rights of political status enjoyed by the Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring their declaration to the known knowledge of the Zionist Federation. So, a hundred years since the Balfour Declaration. Another key event that occurred in 1917, uh, which was the 100 years of Shoham, uh, had a severe and deadly geopolitical repercussions. I refer to the infamous Belfort Declaration, an important milestone in the of anniversaries. The Belfort Declaration was a letter addressed by Arthur James Belfort, the then Foreign Minister, to Walter Rothschild. The letter is dated the 2nd of November 1917 and was the result of decades of pressure by the Zionists who had formed their first conference, the World Zionist Conference, in 1897 in Basel, Switzerland. Unfortunately for the people already living on that land, the Palestines, the letter has been used by the Zionists to justify the founding of Israel by force, which eventually happened on the 14th of May 1948. 
The UK was occupying Palestine at the time, so had no lawful right to grant the territory to anyone since they stole it themselves, so the letter is hardly a binding legal document. Author Koster is a Jewish author who exposed the myth of and Jewish claim to Palestine in his 1976 book, The 13th Tribe. In that book, he outlines why Ashkenazi Jews are not descendants from the historical Israelites of antiquity, but rather from the Khazars, Czechic people from the Khazaria, which is now Russia. He theorizes that the Khazars, who converted to Judaism in the 8th century AD, migrated westwards into Eastern Europe in the 12th to 13th centuries when the Khazar Empire was collapsing. Colster wrote that in the Balfour Declaration, one nation solely promised to a second nation, the country of a third. Well put. Why is there a picture of a dick there? It's gross. Additionally, the letter states the UK would support the Zionists establishing a Jew homeland if nothing was done to the detriment of civil rights and religious rights of Palestine living there. Anyone who knows about Israel's treatment about the Palestine, e.g. rationing their food, shooting um, um, Arab civilians, including children, building illegal settlements on stolen land, testing new weapons against them in the Gaza Strip, an open-air concentration camp, and committing genocide – We'll know that the Zionists have hardly respected that. Here is an expert from the Balfour Declaration. His Majesty's Government view with the favour in the establishment of Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavours to facilitate the achievement of this object. It is clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may produce the civil and religious rights of the existing non-Jewish community in Palestine or the rights of political status enjoyed by Jews in every country. 1897, the Rothschilds founded the Zionist Congress to promote Zionism, a political movement with the sole aim of moving all Jews into a singularity Jew, Jewish nation state and arrange its first meeting in Munich. However, due to extreme opposition from local Jews, who are quite happy where they are, this meeting has to be moved to Basel, Switzerland, and takes place on the 29th of August. The Balfour Declaration didn't just occur by chance. It was pushed forward by the Zionist power brokers and sympathisers who had swayed way over the UK and US governments over the time. There is considerable evidence that the UK signed off on the Jewish homeland as part of the backroom deal so they could, so they could enter U, get US to enter World War I on their side. Remember, numerous members of the same group of the international bankers, many Jewish, were pushing for Zionism and had the power to fund either the UK, Triple N Trade or Germany, Triple Alliance, and thus decided to outcome by the war of whom they chose to fund more heavily. The article behind the Balfour Declaration, Britain's Great War Pledge to Lord Rothschild at the Institute of Historical Review, quotes several key figures who have admitted that the Balfour Declaration was part of a deal where US entry into World War I was a dangling carrot in front of the UK donkey. As I have already said, I had a part in initiating the negations in the early autumn of 1916 between the French and governments, British and French governments, Oh, go away. I don't want that. Go away. The De declaration of the British and French governments and the Zionist leaders, which led to the Balfour Declaration and the British Mandate for Palestine. The first object, of course, was to enlist the very considerable and necessary influence of the Jews, and especially the Zionist or Nationalist Jews, to help us bring America into the war at the most critical period of the hostilities. This was publicly acknowledged by Mr Lloyd George during a recent debate in the House of Commons. James Malcolm, who worked with Mark Skies at one point, at one of the writers of Skies' Pite Agreement. The only way which proved to be so to include the American president to come into the war was to secure the cooperation of the Zionist Jews by promising them Palestine and thus enlist and mobilise here the here and two unspectably powerful forces of the Zionist Jews in America and now swear in favour of the Allies on a quid pro quo contract basis. Thus, as it will be seen, the Zionists having carried out their part and greatly helped to bring America in, the Balfour Declaration of 1917 
was but the public confirmation of a necessary secret gentleman's agreement of 1916 made with the previous knowledge, acquiescence and for the approval of the Arabs and the British and of the French and of other allied governments and not merely a voluntary altruistic and romantic gesture on the part of Great Britain as certain people either through pardonable ignorance assume or unpardonable ill will would represent or rather misrepresent Samuel Landon, secretary to the Zionist leaders, wise men and Soko, and later secretary to the World Zionist Organization. There is no better proof of the value of the Balfour Declaration as a military move than the fact that Germany entered into negotiations with Turkey in an endeavour to provide an alternative scheme which would appeal to Zionists. It was believed that if Great Britain declared for the fulfilment of the Zionist aspirations in Palestine under her own pledge, one effect would bring Russia jury to the cause of the entrant. It was believed also that such a declaration would have a potent influence upon world Jewry outside of Russia and secure for the entire the aid of Jewish financial interests in America. Their aid in this respect would have special value when the Allies had almost exhausted the gold and the marketable securities available for the American purchases. Such were the chief considerations which in 1917 impelled the British government towards making the contract with the Jewry. Lord George, UK Prime Minister, 1916-1922. It is entirely appropriate that the Belfire Declaration is addressed to a Rothschild since the Rothschild family remains the most powerful, wealthy, influential family in the of bloodlines and secret societies. Despite all this, we are not finished with 1917, for it was also the year of the Russian Revolution, which will be continued in part two of the anniversaries. So, I'll get to part two a bit later on. Um, yeah, I, I just don't know if you know about any of this. So, yeah, if you're still watching, stay tuned. Hit the like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video. Raise your vibrations. Much love. Bye now.